Oh God, we praise you because you are a loving and faithful God, and you are a God who cares about each one of us. And God, you are the God of the harvest. You are the God of fullness. You are the God of providence. You are the God of abundance. And God, today you minister to each one of us who has lost something. You minister to any one of us who's lost our joy or lost our way. And your invitation to us is take it back. Take your life back. Take your voice back. Take your hope back. Take your dreams back. Take your vision back. Rise up, people of God, and know that God has something for you today. Our God is a God of restoration. Our God is a God who invites us into this amazing fullness. And today, God, as we think about what it means to begin again, take us back. Take us back to that first love. Take us back to who you are. Take us back to who we are in you. Take us back to our best selves. Oh God, today we are on the threshold. We are on the cusp. We're open. And if we're a little hesitant, help us to know you're with us. We're not trying to force anything. Your arms are wide open. Your gentle touch is on each one of our shoulders. And you're with us wherever we are on the journey. And for that, we are so grateful. And now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be in alignment with your love and with your dreams, your dreams for each one of us. We thank you, God, that you open doors even doors we may not see. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Deidre. That's the story of our faith right there. Taking it back. We have a God who's with us in the journey, and today's question for Lynn is, how do we begin again? For some, that is a question that comes at what seems like the wrong time. It's a question that could come if you're called into the office and your boss says your position is being cut. And suddenly you have to begin again. It's a question that some may have when they go to the doctor's office after they've been called in for some blood work and the diagnosis is cancer and it's like, how do I begin again? What, what do I do with this? For some it could be the loss of a loved one. How do we begin again? How do we begin again? It feels like we're stuck and we want to figure out some new moves, but we've been in the same place so long we're not even sure what next step to take. Others, it may be that things are really going well. And perhaps this idea of beginning again isn't even on the radar. How do you begin again when it seems like you've got everything together? And that's what's going on in our scripture today. We have a text that speaks about Nicodemus who's invited on this journey of beginning again. And yet if you look at him, he was a respected teacher and leader. In fact, his very presence conveyed power and success. Nicodemus was a person of precision. He believed in showing up on time, measuring things correctly, and being precise in his theology. He was an expert. If Nicodemus came to MCC DC and heard us talk about how we don't all believe the things, same things, he'd go, what? <laughs> what kind of place is this? And yet, that's kind of what he's opening up to in our scripture today. Something was pulling him to Jesus. Something he couldn't precisely define or articulate or measure. And it happened at night. And so at night, Nicodemus comes to Jesus with questions. Now some have speculated what's up with this idea of coming at night and some said well he was afraid of what his colleagues would think. He was thinking about his power, his position. Maybe he was coming out of fear for what they would say. I'm thinking that what's really going on here is there was something stirring in him. Something compelling that he was thinking about who he was hearing Jesus was and the signs and miracles that Jesus was doing. And it was like he had, he had to talk about this. He had to find out what was up with this. 
And he couldn't wait another minute, so at night he comes to Jesus. I love this story from John 3 because it's a wonderful Lenten story. It's a wonderful story of the journey, a journey that is not easily defined, a journey that is not contained. I love this story because it's like the wild side of Lent. It's an invitation into questions and adventure. Jesus offers Nicodemus something mysterious and messy. Nicodemus, this one of precision, when he comes to Jesus and talks with Jesus, hears Jesus use language he was unfamiliar with, language like born anew, water and spirit. If Nicodemus was coming for a well-ordered list, he left frustrated. Jesus said, don't be surprised that I say to you, you must be born anew. God's spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound. You don't know where it comes from or where it is going. Oh, a God who is wild. A God who cannot be contained. A God who does not control, but invites. I imagine Nicodemus, like most of us, would like to know where he was going I imagine he wanted to know what was coming next. But Jesus didn't offer turn-by-turn directions. Instead, Jesus offered these amazing, overflowing descriptions. After Jesus completes his descriptions of the spiritual life, the text does not offer Nicodemus' response or further questions. I think Nicodemus was left without questions because he was beyond words at that point. He was a little bit overwhelmed. He was trying to take it all in. I'd love to know more about Nicodemus. I'd love to know more of his story. What did he do with that conversation? Some have criticized Nicodemus, but I have no criticism of him because like so many of us, he was just figuring it out. We do have a few clues about what happened to Nicodemus later, just two. Later in John He confronts his colleagues and says, give Jesus a chance before you judge him. And then the second time Nicodemus shows up is after Jesus' crucifixion when he ministers and offers care to the body of Jesus. To me, it says that Nicodemus continued in a journey that began with that conversation. He had this new beginning with Jesus and he acted on it step by step. I would love more details, but it's clear that he was opened in some amazing ways. An invitation from this scripture is to ask ourselves, what does it mean for us to open ourselves to a new beginning? The first thing I think is to realize that we need to move from becoming experts to becoming seekers. Experts oftentimes think they have it all figured out. And it's easy for people to think they've become an expert on their own life, to get so stuck in a certain way of being that one does not open to what new possibilities could be there. Nicodemus the expert became a seeker in this passage and opened his life. And that's our invitation as well. Become a beginner also means to not just take the first answer and to not take easy answers. Nicodemus wanted some answers that day. He wanted Jesus to give him answers. Jesus instead, rather than giving him answers, invited him to grow into a life, to grow into new possibilities, to walk through this door he couldn't even see. When we embrace spiritual adventuring, we move in ways that open ourselves to the God who is mysterious and wild and also intimate and close. Our other reading today from Genesis spoke of the story of Abram. And here's one as well who shows what it means to begin again. He had a good life with Sarai, his partner. And the Lord comes to him and says, Leave your country, your people, and the home of your parents and go to the place I will show you. I can't begin to imagine the kind of resistance he immediately began to feel. He was 75 years old. Perhaps he was ready for retirement. And God was saying, move, take these steps, leave where you are for an unknown future and go to an unknown land. An open invitation into the unknown. The invitation here is to be willing to move from what is to the not yet. Our God is oftentimes a God 
of the not yet. A God who has something else before us, something else ahead of us. How do we begin again? Ben Clendenin said, true religion requires lifelong conversion. Often from my own religious ideas and practices, I must be born again from above like Nicodemus. Born again and again all my life long. In my thoughts, in my words, and in my deeds. May it all begin again this Lent. It's an invitation to curiosity. It's an invitation to experiment with what God may be doing. Wilkie says, have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Oftentimes the questions cause all kinds of anxiety. The invitation is to learn to love the questions, to lean into the questions, to lean into the curiosity, to lean into the possibilities. It all comes back to trust. At some point, Nicodemus trusted the next step. Abram and Sarai trusted the next step. And that's our invitation as well. The former pastor of MCCDC, the one who moved us from M Street over to this location, shared a story that's continued to resonate in my life. It was a story he called Connect the Dots. And uh, he talked about how one day over on M Street in his office, he was just overwhelmed with administrative stuff. He was stressed out. He was anxious, trying to figure out what to do with this anxiety. And he went back to his favorite solution, which was potato chips. Potato chips always seemed to get him through. And I say that with great love. Uh, <laughs> He loved potato chips, and so he said, I'm going to go to the corner market and get some potato chips. And as he was going, he was praying and asking God for guidance and trying to figure all this out. He was stressed out. He got to the corner market, and there near the potato chips was a magazine rack, and he happened to have his eye drawn to a children's activity book. And something prompted him to buy that book. So he got his chips, he got the activity book, went back to his office, started eating the chips, and then opened the activity book and started looking at the exercises in there. And there was one of them that was called Connect the Dots. And he thought, well, this will calm me down. This will get me focused. And he started to do the Connect the Dot. So the one was here. And then he thought, you know, two should be over here, but two, two is down here. What's, what's up with that? And he found himself resistant to connecting the dots as they were on that page. And then he realized the only way the picture would unfold was to go to the unexpected places dot by dot and to know that God was making sense of what on the page seemed to make no sense at all. Move here, now move here. Move here and then here. And then step by step the picture began to unfold and soon there was something beautiful. And that's our opportunity we may look at our lives right now and say, God, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> what next? And God may say, well, start with potato chips. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then. God is at work in ways that perhaps we cannot see, but in ways that nevertheless are true. How do we begin again? Dot by dot by dot. Know today that God is at work in your life. You can trust God. God is with you. We are God's beloved and God's community seeking to build a place where we can grow together in God's grace. Amen and so it is. Amen.